Good morning. I think I'm, uh, I met you mostly at the door. Uh, my name's Jane Hart. I'm an educational mental health practitioner uh, for uh, Cheshire and Willow Partnership Mental Health Support Team. Um, and I'm also cluster lead and cover the schools in Wallasey. Um, I've got lots of experience of going into schools and working with the Next Steps card with a, an array of children and parents as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, so what I guess what I was thinking at the end of that conversation then was just how joyful it is when you work with children and young people to be able to get creative you know that's one of the things that we can do is have that uh, creativity in sessions we're challenged aren't we by the young people that we work with to to really engage with them in different ways and i've got all kinds of pictures in my head of little figures that can be used to move up the steps and everything else now so i'm going to start thinking about that and <laughs> using that pete mentioned the l word lunch that's not coming yet. <laughs> 20 past 12. Uh, so half an hour. Keep going. We're going to bring it back up, uh, get you interacting now. Then we're going to hear from uh, some colleagues around using um, the cards um, in, a, in a, um, a primary care setting. Um, but before that, we want you to have a little think. So you've already started thinking. You've heard about um, Kate and Holly showed you um, one way of using the cards with younger children you've had a bit of a think about that pete's spoken about spoken about how uh, he's used the cards with um, children with autism and um, learning difficulties but what we'd like you to do now is have a conversation on your table um, and just talk to each other about how you've used the cards in different ways jenny and i hear all the time people come to us and say oh we use we use the cards in this way is that okay and we say, you use them however you want. As, as Pete said, you're the experts in working with the people and the young people and adults that you work with. Um, and what we're keen for you to share with each other and with us is um, how you've used the cards in different ways. We heard a bit about using the cards in a social care setting, in a safeguarding um, uh, setting to get the voice of the child, but also understand maybe a child's sense of safety. Um, so just have a little think. It's not you don't you don't have to have anything too fancy. It's not that, but just examples with each other of how you've used them, either just in the way that you were trained and how that's worked or not worked. Um, but also if you've used them in, in a different way, maybe you've used them with adults, maybe you've used them in a group setting, um, you know, where have you sort of done it in a different way um, and, and just found it interesting and, and may think that others would find that interesting too. So we're going to give you sort of five to seven minutes on your tables, have a chat, um, and then think about what you'd like to share with the group. If you don't want to put your hand up and say it yourself, as we're coming round, grab us and we'll hear your story and we can share that stuff. So I know it's not always easy to talk in a big group like this. Um, so have a chat amongst yourselves. How have you used the cards in maybe a way that you weren't trained, but you think it's quite interesting, or in a way you were trained um, and it's worked quite well? Okay. Apologies for stopping you mid-conversation. Um, it's fantastic that you're all sharing your practice with each other. That's the point of today, the best practice event. Um, who would like to share an example of how they've used the cards differently or adapted them? <laughs> uh, just one thing I found helped um, is I've not only used them on the table, I've always mm -hmm. put them on the floor, and especially yeah. those diagnosed with ADHD, I've let them decide how far they want those cards to be, so it's more of an interactive where we can move around, and I feel I get quite a lot from them in those situations. Brilliant, thank you. And we talked earlier, didn't we, about um, working with younger children and movement. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've done that before as well, where, where you've got the space, sometimes the rooms are in are like this. Um, uh, but there's something about moving over there or moving, you know, and, and actually being able to talk it through. So, yeah, thank you. That's, that's a great tip. And we've just actually spoken about that on the back table as well, because that's something I've, I've done, put them on the, on the floor to keep it interactive, to keep the child focused as well. But they're still in charge of the session, so they're so versatile. Thank you. Jane, have you got a packet of the, um, there's some of the A4 card size oh, yeah. packs there? So, um, if, if anybody wants a, a pack of A4 cards, let me know um, and I'll let you know the price and everything yeah, else. The they are obviously brilliant to be able to lay out on the floor or if you're using a group or anything like that. 
Thank you. So was there another example here? Sorry. So I was just going to say on behalf of this table, um, we, we had a discussion around how using the blank cards uh, to create a bespoke family card for the for the child or the young person, whoever you're working with, to get a real sense of actually who that fam who belongs in the family, uh, uh, you know, uh, as seen by the child, and then how that can be a prompt session by session to say, you know, has anything changed in the family? And that might help you to get an idea of, of when things are changing, even if there's a new dog or whatever that might be. Um, so that, I thought that was a really nice adaption. Yeah, that's yeah, lovely. Thank you. Thanks for sharing that. What else have people done? There was some a table at the back. I said, I wasn't going to put you on the spot and I'm not going to. I'm just going to reiterate what you said. <laughs> But there, there was a, a group of ladies at the back who haven't yet used the cards, but they yeah. were actually having a discussion about how they might incorporate them. And the other people on the table were picking up those ideas. So it's even just sharing those ideas before you've even gone out to use them, which is really beneficial. Um, but not to pick on the lady who said the camera's not going to go on you. Um, if Jenny's got the mic behind you, if you'd like to share. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm working with a young person who's autistic and mm -hmm. selective mute. Um, and I've not to this point heard her voice. But I use the cards on myself with her, um, probably to share it as well, that my life's not perfect, not everything goes under green for me, um, and that's something I'm going to keep trying to introduce with her to try and get her to, to engage with them, um, that I might be a professional coming into your family home, but I'm also outside of this, a mum, you, you, you know, things like that, so that's how I've used it. That's a lovely Thank example. You. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Jenny's getting her steps in today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we go into schools and support um, children in schools for various different reasons and sometimes that leads to us providing interventions for them. And a really handy way that we identify what will be the best way is to start with the next step. So yes. then judging by what their target goal needs to be, um, we then start delivering other interventions based off that and do check-ins with the next steps as well, which is a really good way for us to be able to use them. Oh, thank brilliant. you for sharing that. Yeah, it's lovely because it's just getting that child's voice straight away, especially sometimes just using the traffic lights and the light car just to see exactly you know what the difficulties are or also what the positives are as well yes. focusing on them as well as as well as the difficulties the old person's got so thank you for sharing that thank you any other examples that anybody would like to share okay oh the... one yep yeah, final one over there <laughs> thank you i knew that table would come through for me <laughs> <laughs> We work with young people who are at significant risk of hospital admission for the mental health. So I, I've worked with a young lady who was really, really low, uh, completely hopeless, thought everything in her life was miserable. And then when she started using the life cards and actually looking at the different aspects of her life separately, she was able to put quite a few of them in either amber or one or two in green. So it, it really helped to give her a little bit of hope to go, actually, there are some positives. It's not all bad. Mm. When you think of it as a whole, you might go, oh, everything's awful. But when you break it down, actually, you've got family that really care about you. You've got, you know, different things in your life that are more positive. So let's not look at the reds today. Mm. Let's focus on the greens and the good things. And I think just being able to visually separate out different aspects of a life helped her to realise some things are more positive than others and yes yes yeah. that's, that's what I did that's brilliant thank, thank you. you because the other thing there is you're not telling her that she is realising that for herself isn't she by sorting the cards herself you're just facilitating that conversation so you know and that's that's a high stakes conversation isn't it that's you know it's difficult work working with young people um you know who, who are at high risk of harm to themselves isn't it a lot of our work is difficult in, in all our different areas, but that can, as a practitioner, that can feel particular pressure, can't it? Um, you mentioned that, that, that young people Jenny, right? Sorry. 
Um, we've mentioned that as one of the kinds of issues or things to be aware of with using the cards because we're the dynamic support team. So all of our cases are really complex, really high risk. Um, so sometimes they can lead the conversation in a way that might tip over mm -hmm. into what should be clinical work or discussions that they should have with the CAMS case manager mm -hmm. or the Reddies. The um, psychiatrist or any any of the other key professionals who, whose role that is yeah. and sometimes they they start opening up once they start using the cards and they really want to dig into conversations and and it's completely outside of our remit and our role and we're like oh i don't want to say the wrong <laughs> thing um so it it can open so many doors that they just start you know spiraling and telling you all kinds and then you just don't want to cross it outside of your own role yeah. and stuff so that was yeah and you don't want to shut down the conversation so that's something that we've just become aware of and we have to manage yeah. very carefully when we have the conversations but it's because they open such a good conversation yeah. but yeah. then that leads us into a bit of a risky area yeah but then if we're working with our yeah. multidisciplinary teams then we we can share that but the best thing is young people being able to open up isn't it yeah. and talk to someone that they are starting to trust mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah fantastic thank you yeah just okay. illustrate how powerful they can be yeah to bring out those start those conversations